It wasn't that long ago that I told you guys that Netflix was pretty determined to make a name for themselves in regards to that of the anime genre. Whether that be live action, such as Bleach, Death Note, a Full Metal Alchemist, or animation itself. As you can see, the studio has pulled that of Naruto, Seven Daily Sins, and the list goes on and on. And not to mention, they have brought to the table new anime, like that of Blood of Zeus, Yuasuke, Blue Eyed Samurai, and one of my favorites, Oni Musha. I absolutely love that franchise. I hope that we get a new game sometime soon. Now today, we have to talk about a new product that the studio has put into the equation and it is called Twilight of the Gods. And I must say, it is absolutely fantastic. Now before I get started, let me give you guys a synopsis in regards to that of Twilight of the Gods. Sigrid, an iron-willed warrior, saves Leaf, a mortal king who falls in love with her. They both survive Thor's wrath of terror, which embarks them in a crew of crusaders on a merciless mission for vengeance against all odds. That is the synopsis. This is also produced by that of Zack Snyder, Deborah Snyder, Wesley Kohler, and Jay Olivia. Production companies, Stone Quarry, animation division, right? So this has Zack Snyder's mark all over it. And I must say, you can definitely tell. Like, the visuals, absolutely fantastic. The story, as always, in regards to whatever Zack Snyder is producing or directing, is, is there. Like, for real. You can't go wrong with Norse mythology, right? All you could do is make a few changes here and there. But, in regards to that of mythology, it is extremely hard to mess that up right look at blood of zeus blood of zeus was fantastic right you got to learn the world a lot more than what you could ever have imagined in regards to that of mythology right and it's the same with twilight of the gods right norse mythology is certainly easy to get look at god of war right it gave us a norse mythology story but it managed to give us its own story and everybody loves it for that twilight of the gods Pretty much does the same thing here. There's a few changes in regards to this Norse mythology story, but everything that it brings to the table is done extremely well. The pacing, fine, absolutely fine. From start to finish, I was like, damn, I'm engaging on this in a whole different way, right? Like, Blood of Zeus, I sat through it, I watched it. And yeah, sometimes I looked at my phone, I looked away a few times, probably ruled up, you know, a blunt or two, you know, wasn't paying attention. But Twilight of the Gods, I had this need to make sure I had all of my <laughs> stuff ready before I sat down. And I'm glad I did. Right. The engagement in regards to this is unheard of. Right. You're instantly, instantly invested into what is going on on the screen here man i mean this thing is mature not to mention the characters are done extremely well the design choices is fantastic now the only gripe that i would say that i have here would be that of the animation i'm not too crazy over the animation right but in regards to the story you instantly forget about the animation like when you look at the animation, you feel like you're watching something that is made for a child. But when you look at it all, right, it all comes together, you know, like a dinner. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes you start cooking things and it doesn't look like it's going to make sense until you actually put it all together. And I feel like Twilight of the Gods does a wonderful job at putting it all together. Right. The action is just fantastic. The R rating is absolutely needed in regards to this. Thor is around here swinging his hammer, just ripping people apart, man. And not to mention he's he's very merciless. Right. He grabs people by the throat and he may take his hammer and just smash down on the head. Just, bam. Who you thought you was coming at like that? And at the end of this all right, they tried to jump my boy at Thor. And they were totally unsuccessful, right? Thor was kicking their butts, man. I said, yeah, 
That is Thor. Don't get me wrong. I love the MCU Thor, but I love to see a real Thor, right? When it comes down to this character or or this this being of mythology, right? Like God of War, they made Thor what Thor was supposed to be. Now we all love Chris Hinesworth's inter interpretation of the character, but sometimes you would like to see that bloodthirsty Thor, and this definitely established a bloodthirsty Thor. I was afraid of this man, and it's hard to scare your boy hole. Right? I was like, damn, what is he going to do next? I had no clue. Things was unpredictable, even though I already knew what was about to happen. And that is the the key thing about this, right? It managed to have you intrigued, right, and, and give you the suspense as to what is going to happen next, even though you know this story already, right? It is fantastic, man. I highly recommend this, ladies and gentlemen. Netflix told themselves anime is something that all of these other studios is unwilling to touch. But what we're going to do, we're going to go all in on it. Go on Netflix right now. You got Baki. You know what? I forgot about Baki. Baki is absolutely fantastic, ladies and gentlemen. Lord have mercy. Oh, I forgot to talk about that one, man. Whew. You guys should check that one out as well, man. You got all types of anime on Netflix, man. And Netflix said, look, all of you other studios, y'all don't want to touch it. Guess what? It is going to belong to us in, in the future, right? Now, don't get me wrong. Netflix anime isn't on the level of that of Naruto or Bleach. You know what I'm saying? It's not on the level of that of Ninja Scroll, but it's certainly getting there. It is certainly given now. And what I like about their, their original anime, you know, like Blue Eyes Samurai and Twilight of the Gods, they have this certain cinematic feel to them, right? Like Naruto, yeah, Naruto is fun. The animation is cool, you know, but when it comes down to a lot of what Netflix is producing, when you're watching it, you think you're watching a film like Blood of Zeus. Blood of Zeus is absolutely fantastic. I cannot wait for season three. And you know what? I cannot wait for season two of Twilight of the Gods. If I was to grade Twilight of the Gods, I would give that a 10 out of 10. Like for real. Your boy is into mythology, whether that be Greek or Norris. And trust me when I tell you, if you are as well, you are going to certainly enjoy this. Now, before I get out of here, let me give you guys some bonus coverage here. I have to give you guys a box office tracking update. You know what I'm saying? Coming in at number one is Be The Juice, Be The Juice. This is the film's second weekend, no, third weekend, and it earned $26 million at the domestic box office for a domestic total of $226 million and $103 million overseas for $329 million worldwide. That film is certainly in the land of profitability because the budget was only a hundred million dollars. So that is good for be the juice, be the juice. I have yet to see it yet. I have yet to see it. Hopefully I can see it pretty soon and give you guys my opinion on it. Coming in at number two in his first weekend is Transformers one with twenty five million dollars. 14 million dollars overseas and thirty nine million dollars worldwide. This film has to be careful, even though it has a budget of just 75 to 85 million dollars, I believe it's 70, but it still could flop. Let's just say that. Coming in at number three in the second weekend is Speak No Evil with 5.9 million dollars in total and a domestic total of 21 million dollars and an overseas total of 20 million dollars for a worldwide total of 42 million dollars. Coming in at number four is Never Let Go. I believe that is Halle Berry's film with $4.5 million in his first weekend. Wow. And a worldwide total of $4.5 million. Coming in at number five is Deadpool and Wolverine with $3.9 million at the domestic box office with a domestic total of $627 an international total of $689 and a worldwide total of $1.3 billion. So I would say about $1.330 will probably be what Deadpool and Wolverine may in its worldwide run at. 
Coming in at number six is the substance with $3.1 million. And that $3.1 million is its domestic total and overseas just $20,000. A worldwide total of $3.1 million. Add in the $20,000 as well. Coming in at number seven in its fourth weekend is I Am Racist with $2.5 million and a worldwide total of $9 million. That is also its domestic total as well. Coming in at number eight in its fifth weekend is Reagan with $1.6 million. It has a domestic total of $26 million and a worldwide total of $26 million. You know, foreigners was not going to watch a film about Reagan. Coming in at number nine is Jung Kong, Jung Kook, I Am Still with $1.4 million. Domestic total is $2.5 million. Overseas total is $5.6 million. And worldwide total is $8 million. And rounding out the top 10 in his seventh weekend is Elian Ramius with $1.3 million at the domestic box office with a domestic total of $103 million and an overseas total of $237 million and a worldwide total of $341 million. I don't think that it's going to catch the total box office of Prometheus, which is pro. Sorry about that. Prometheus. Prometheus grossed $126 million domestically, so it has the opportunity to catch it on that front, and $276 million overseas for a worldwide total of $403 million. So I don't think that it's going to catch that with $340 million worldwide. I don't know if it has opened to all of its markets as of yet, but as it stands right now, Prometheus will be the top worldwide grocer in the Aliens franchise. So as it stands right now, it will be that of Prometheus, which is a film that I absolutely love. Oh, and by the way, before I get out of here, and I'm sorry that I'm all over the place, but I did forget to tell you guys what Twilight of the Gods managed to do on that of Rotten Tomatoes. Right now, the series sits at 60% on Rotten Tomatoes with all critics Top Critics hasn't rated it yet. Hmm. That's after only 10 reviews. Six reviews is fresh for us. <laughs> and four reviews are riding. Audience. Our audience has given it a 82%. That's a little bit lower than what I rated it, but it will do. It will do. <laughs> so there you have it, you guys. I've told you guys what I thought about Twilight of the Guys, and I have given you a box office tracking report and also has informed you about the Twilight of the Guys reception. I'm your boy. O. Hopefully, you have watched this video all the way to the end of your boy out that algorithm. And if you're not subscribed, please be sure to do so. I'm trying to reach that magical number of 10,000 subscribers. So I'll be highly appreciative if you will help me cross over that threshold by hitting that subscribe button. And if y'all gonna hit that subscribe button, make sure you hit that notification bell because YouTube absolutely sucks at notifying subscribers that content creators has uploaded videos to that platform. And don't forget to hit that like button. Tell me out that algorithm, baby. But in the comments below, if you have seen Twilight of the Gods, Tell me, what did you think about it? Do you agree with me when I say that this series feels cinematic? And also, are you excited for season two? And not to mention, tell me what you thought about the top 10 at this past weekend's box office. And always remember, let it la bon temps rouler. That means let the good times roll. Let me know in the comments below.